you should not exist. What if you listen to these words, not once, not twice, but over 20 years? And what if they come from your own mother? How would you feel? I was in third grade when, in a sunny day, I reached my mother after coming back from school. I only wanted a bit of attention, but instead I listened to the same shouting. I was so used to this yelling, but today a girl from my class asked me, why does your mother hate you? I could feel was true, but I didn't know the answer. My mother used to beat me all the time. Sometimes it was so hard that I could barely handle the pain and release myself. I was always so afraid. The hits were just like that, for no particular reason, or at least the six-year-old me couldn't understand why I was beaten all the time and punished for what? I want you to pick right now one word that describe your childhood. I give you five seconds. Three, two, one. Ready with the word? I try to find the best word for my childhood. Pain, agony, anger, rage. None of those words would describe it best because the physical suffering was nothing compared to the mental pain. Imagine that you are a six years old child and all you listen from your mother is you should not exist, followed by the physical pain of being beaten. She didn't want to have me, and if it was not my father, I would never have been born. So the words I choose for my childhood is suffering, because suffering is the struggle that makes us mentally strong. To survive in a harsh environment, children create an invisible shield around them. And in their mind, the shield protects them to survive. After listening so many times that I should not exist, I build my shield and spend time in my bedroom, crying and thinking, why do I exist? Really, why do I exist? Well, I existed anyway, so I start learning the art of being invisible. I was trying not to be noticed, so that could save me some aggression. You know, the punishment wasn't just a family thing. My teacher was an old school lady that used to think that punishment is the best way to teach. And I was already so afraid of being beaten that my brain used to go blank the moment she called my name or asked me the first question in class. I was growing up constantly afraid. My bedroom was my hiding place outside school. A lovely room with warm colors, lovely furniture, and a huge library opposite my bed. The books became my best friend and gave me the love I was giving to them. I had to be quieter than the walls around the house. And every day, I followed my mother moves, hiding in my bedroom 
and waiting for my dad to come home and save me from anger and rage. It was my early lesson from the life that suffering is the struggle that makes us mentally strong. One day, I woke up, got up from bed, and found myself on the floor. I couldn't move my legs. I didn't know which one to choose. Be deadly afraid of making noise and call for help, or the shock that I couldn't move my legs. I was paralyzed from my waist all down ways to toes. I had no choice but to call for help. I still remember the panic. I was seven years old and I couldn't move my legs. That year, my father became my physical and mental support more than ever. And even though, without knowing, I was learning a lesson that suffering is the struggle that makes us mentally strong. Now you think I had enough as a child and suddenly something flipped and magically changed. Well, eight years later, I was celebrating my 15th birthday and my father had an operation and was going worse by the day. I was kept asking what was going on so I could have the news. My father has cancer and we can only expect the worst. For three more years, I was watching the most important person to me, suffering. I was asking to understand the cruelty of these situations. What is the meaning of our human existence? Why can't we put an end to somebody suffering and not feeling guilty at the same time? I was watching my father, my shield, slowly dying. Being invisible wasn't even a thing anymore. I was mastering the art of hiding pain and sadness. In the complex world of the teens, I was climbing all agony charts and still learning a lesson that suffering is the struggle that makes us mentally strong. It wasn't until I was 26 that I was offered my dream job. For four months, 
I went to the BEST Academy to do the mandatory course and prepare for the presentation on the last day. If I tell you that I was off of the charts of being invisible, that would be a big lie. My stress was growing by the day. On the presentation day, I went to the academy, then stopped at the door and decided to go first for the coffee shop around the corner. Unlike most people, the coffee calms me down. I am a coffee addict. So I thought, I have one coffee, 10 minutes, relax, I will feel like a superwoman, and I go to the course. One hour later, I realized that I had to decide. Either do the presentation and get the job, or hide again and stay invisible. I went to the academy again, Stop at the classroom door and went home. Once again, my life experience was affecting me in a way I couldn't control. The feeling of failure was so close to the sense of suffering and stay there for a long time. And I kept le learning a lesson that suffering is the struggle that makes us mentally strong. But my adult life kept adding to my plate. A sequence of stories to compete for a movie script, fighting for years to build my confidence and presence till the sudden death of my partner, which threw me in a complete breakdown and depression. In a deep moment of stress, I thought I had enough for my life and I tried suicide. I fight to exist all my life. And I was quitting. I was deciding not to exist after all. Something made me stop in the middle. And that was my turning point. I could not quit the strength of my life. I earned it. So I start my transformation like a butterfly from the cocoon. I had life coaching, NLP, hypnotherapy, and at some point one day I thought that I could be the one helping others that go through a tremendous suffering as me in the past. I learned the hard way that suffering is the struggle that makes us mentally strong. I don't ask anymore why I exist. I do exist and I stand up. I exist to help others go through suffering and come out as mentally strong as never before. Every one of you can restart your life with a new meaning of it. 
I exist to give you this message. Suffering is the struggle that makes us mentally strong. Thank you.